Hey, Coach, um, Miller Cop talked after the game, and he mentioned how kind of getting that first loss out of the way isn't a positive, but how it can kind of remind everyone that anyone can beat anyone in the Big Ten. And with that target on your back, what do you think that did for your guys to kind of give them a kick in the rear, give them a boost? Well, it's not just the Big Ten. I mean, you can. I think you can be beaten by anybody in college basketball if you don't come to play. And for sure the Big Ten because there's so many good teams and good coaches. So, um, you know, he's kind of right on target. Um, you know, we can't play like that, especially on the road. I thought we were – we did some good things after watching the tape uh, really the night before the night of the game, after the game, we watched it. And then on the way back and then we watched it again yesterday with the team and there was some good things, but I just thought we got out tough. To, you know I mean? That, that was more glaring to me than anything. Mike Schumann. Yeah. Hey coach. If you see this theme of teams, doubling trace you know emphasizing the paint real heavy I, I know you said you guys got to make shots what other things are you focused on offensively to kind of counteract that move well there's there's not a whole lot you can focus in on the bottom line is you got to make shots guys I mean if somebody's posting the ball and he's got double team if he's double teamed down low if he's double teamed out top the ball's got to move around it's, it's going to fall in somebody's hands and they got to make a shot it's just that simple it's not scientific guys it's not there's nothing magical about it. You can be double teamed down low. You can be double teamed out top on the side, which we were double teamed out top. We were double teamed down low. Guys got to make shots. I mean, and we had some good looks. We just didn't knock them down. Alec Lasley. Hey, Coach. Uh, looking ahead to Arizona, um, one of the most efficient offenses in the country, not only shooting the ball, but just getting multiple guys involved. Uh, what are the keys defensively for you to really slow down that offense and, and kind of make it uncomfortable for especially their guards and big guys? Guys, I'm not, I haven't even looked at Arizona. I'm facing Nebraska right now. That's, you know, that's where my mind and heart is. I mean, I, I never jumped a game ahead when I got a game right there staring me in my face. I mean, I would never do that as a coach. So I can't give you any information on Arizona right now. I really can't. I've seen them play a number of times, but my focus is not there. It's on Nebraska. Mike Merritt. Coach, um, I, I've got, I'm going to apologize ahead of time because I am looking to some big picture things. But um, when you got here, I have two questions for you. And the first is when you got here, you talked about restoring the program and the kind of the glory of, of IU basketball. Uh, and you talked about wanting to play UCLA's and Kentucky's of the world and that sort of thing. When what is what is good about having an Indiana program in the top fifteen playing the North Carolinas and the, and the Arizonas and the Kansas of the world? What is good about that for college basketball? Well, it's good for our fan base, number one. Mm -hmm. And if you got a good enough team that can compete at that level, why not give it a shot? You know, what I mean. You know, as a player and as a coach, I've never feared a, any team or any players. So, you know, I think we're good enough to beat anybody in the country if we commit for 40 minutes on both ends of the floor. So, you know, why not play the Kentuckys and the Carolinas and the Kansas? I mean, I think it's good for basketball. It's good for viewership. And, and it's definitely good for our fan base. They love that. So, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with it. Second question for you is you grew up in this state at a time when basketball, college basketball in particular was really in a golden age with Purdue, Notre Dame, and Indiana all really playing good basketball. You're in a situation right now where you've got two teams that are in the top 15 in the men, two teams that are in the top five in the women, and two teams that are knocking on the door to get in the top 25. What does that say about the state of college basketball in the state of Indiana? Well, it's, it's, it's great, number one. I mean, man, this is home for me. So anything that goes well here in the state means a great deal to me. I I followed, you know, Purdue, Indiana, Notre I followed all those schools my 34 years in the NBA. I mean, that's just what you do as a, a guy growing up here in the state playing basketball. Um, I followed Butler. You know, I mean, I, 
I've, I've just been that way over the years. Um, but it's, I think it's good for the state. Um, you know, it gives our state an opportunity to, you know, to get out and see, you know, good basketball being played around the state. So, I mean, I, I think it's great. I really do. Appreciate Alex Bozic. Hold on, guys, one second. I don't want to lose you. My computer's signaling. Put some juice in it. All right, go ahead. Coach, thank you for the time. Uh, you mentioned the other night about just kind of the toughness. How much did that show up when you watched film on rebounding? And just in general, how how much of an emphasis has that been this week in practice? And I mean, what what to you makes a good rebounding team? I mean, say that again. I'm sorry, I kind of missed it because I was fooling with That's this. That's okay. Um, I'm just curious, you mentioned the toughness uh, against Rutgers. Uh, how much of that when you watched the film showed up in the rebounding? And what, uh, in your eyes, makes a good rebounding team? Well, that, I mean, to me, rebounding is guts and just going to, when that ball goes up, not ball watch. You know, I mean, you got to go find bodies to put your body on to block out. And we didn't do that. I mean, especially with our perimeter plays. And our bigs got busted a couple of times too, not, you know, putting bodies on bodies. So, I mean, it's just effort and guts, man, because that's, you know, rebounding is a big part of winning basketball games. And it was so glaring. Uh, based on what they did uh, to us from a rebounding standpoint. And I mean, and it started right from the start. And, you know, we haven't been smacked in the face like that from a rebounding standpoint. I thought our defense was good, guys. It wasn't too bad. You give up 63 points on the road. You know, you got to be happy about that. But rebounding, and yeah, we were three turnovers above where we normally are. But I don't think that played a major factor. I just don't think we executed against the press, you know, because there were holes where we just didn't get the ball out quick enough and and they capitalized on it. And I mean, we've been pretty good against presses and being and Trace has been pretty good against double teams. But we just when the ball did come out, we didn't make shots. You know, I mean, looking at the tape, we we missed a lot of good open shots, too. Jack and then Tom. Hey, Coach. Um, I guess with, with Xavier Johnson, just in the last couple of days, what have kind of been some of your conversations or messages with him um, just after, you know, he had a great game against Northwestern and then kind of down performance against Rutgers. Just what's kind of been your conversations with him lately? Well, he had a great game against North Carolina, not Northwestern. But let me, let me say this. You know, I think X, the fact that, you know, we have <clears> – <throat> have been training the last really six months now with two two point guards. And we've kind of taken the ball out of X's hands a little bit. And not having Jalen on the floor, it put it back in his hands in a dominant way, which is okay. But you got to be smart about some of the things you're doing. I think X was just trying to do too much. You know, he kind of, to me, converted back to when I first got him. And, you know, that's, you know, for the sake of our team, he doesn't have to do a whole lot. You know, he's got to do his part, but he's got to also make sure that everybody's involved and and he's not just going off on a tirade doing things that he that he shouldn't do. And, you know, ain't no doubt, you know, missing Jalen Hurt, having another ball handling to take the slack off a little bit from him. But, hey, I don't know when Jalen's going to get back and, you know, we're going to have to figure it out, you know, with X running the point and tomorrow and, and, and Galloway, you know, helping him as long with CJ, helping him handle the basketball out front. Tom, and then we'll wrap up with Tyler. Mike, I know um, the learning process for freshmen is always difficult and such, but now that you uh, Malik has had an opportunity to to play in some of these big high profile games, what is it that you're seeing from him, not only in the games, but in learning in practice and stuff in between? And I'm sure you're hoping to get more of more out of him going forward, right? Well, we I want I want much more out of him because I think he's talented enough. You know, he was in he's gotten in foul trouble. Um, you know, the one thing I've learned in dealing with young players is getting them to understand how hard they got to play. And, 
you know, it was obvious in the North Carolina game with Malik. Um, you know, I mean, he's got to play harder. And, uh, and it's a process in getting them to do that. But the kid's so talented that, you know, it's hard. To, you can't sit him down and teach him that way. You just got to let him learn on the fly. And in doing that, you know, he's going to get in some foul troubles. And we we hope not to get him in foul trouble. But he, he has been in foul trouble lately. And it's, it's hampered us a little bit in terms of keeping him on the floor when we want him on the floor. Last question, Tyler. Hey, Coach. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, you had just talked about um, Indiana getting out tough by Rutgers. I know, you know, toughness is one of those kind of intangible things, but is there anything that you guys can do to work on that? Like any drills in practice, any things, I guess, just to get the most out of your guys in terms of toughness? It's guys, it ain't magical. It ain't, I don't know if you guys have ever played sports. You just got to, you just got to work and, and display it on the floor. You know, I mean, display it like we did in the Carolina game. If you look at that game and you say, well, who was the toughest in that game? You're going to say Indiana was the toughest team. You know, I mean, they got 50-50 balls. They defended the shit out of Carolina. You know, well, we it wasn't that way against Rutgers. They were the toughest team. So, you know, I mean, we've been pretty good in that area. Well, we got out toughed against Rutgers. So we got to figure out how to not let that happen again going forward. I mean, that's that's the key. There's nothing magical in practice that you can, you know, I can roll the ball out and, and say loose ball drills like Coach Knight used to do and make you get on the floor and, and knock the shit out of somebody, you know, and get in the loose ball. I can do all those things, but that don't mean shit to me. You know, you got to do it in the damn game when it counts. You know, that's when it counts, you know, not – not in practice, you know, knocking the shit out of each other, which we do. We beat we beat up each other for almost four months before we actually got an opponent. Well, you know, we've had some pretty good games going forward, but it wasn't too good for us in, in Rutgers. And I don't I don't like the fact that we got out tough. You know, I mean that's that just take guts and hearts to go out and rebound and and get 50 50 balls, things of that nature. So that's something that we got to display in the game and not just in practice.